Hello, it's Chaplin73 here today. Um, I'm interviewing uh, another artist. Um, today we've got James, aka Omi, um, and we'll be finding out a lot more about him. Hello, James. Hi, Darren. Uh, we will be finding out um, more about James and what he does, so I will just crack on with the questions. Um, so, James, who are you? What do you do? And where are you based? So Darren, I'm uh, James Rogers and I go under the name OMI, which is OMI, Open Mind Incorporated. And that comes from, uh, I've done some meditation, I've done a bit of yoga and things like that. And of course, you know, the sound of the universe is on. Yeah. So it kind of suggests that everything is on. So, and then... I, I, I discovered that there was a tattoo artist who went under the name Omi and he was a gen he was actually an aristocratic gentleman who traveled the world doing uh, stints at uh, carnivals and things like that and he covered his body in tattoos oh, wow. and it was and, and I, I just thought that oh, wow that's amazing and and you know, for me, life is all about patterns. So OM and OMI and the fact that OMI for me meant Open Mind Incorporated. You know, it just all fitted in and it's about, it's kind of about the way I deal with life. Yeah. I'm very, you know, I, I'm, I'm open-minded to everything. You know, mm. try everything once and if you don't like it, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of where that comes from. Um, what I do, so I do, a, I, do, I actually do a great deal of things. I, uh, I, it's taken me a very long time to discover myself as a professional artist. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I, I obviously went to art college and I did a foundation course at Middlesex Polytechnic Cat Hill, and then I went on to do graphic design at Canterbury College of Art, but I didn't want to be a graphic designer. I, did, I didn't want to work for anybody. I had my own stuff in my head that I wanted to get out. I didn't want to package baked bean tins. I, I struggled with that a lot. Um, so, uh, and, and, and a lot of my youth I spent uh, working at the markets in Camden, at the Stables Market and the Lock yeah. Market. So I, 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 you know, I had lots of influences, all the different tribes there, the rockers, the punks, the it was just, you know, it's a visual feast down mm -hmm. at uh, Camden. So, uh, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I was just a very confused young man who didn't really know where he was going to fit in. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I've done, I've been a cook, I've been a hairdresser, I've been a pyrotechnician, I've been a stonemason. <laughs> I, you know, I've I've just done lots of different things, things that have come along. I've just ju jumped in and yeah, and very much with the 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 open mind bit. It's uh, I trust myself that I'm capable, and although I'm I'm very you know in 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 the moment I'm very scared. I, you know, like can you do this? Yes, I can do this, but I don't know if I can do it. But you know, along along the the story. It looks like I can do things and I'm capable of, my brain is capable of picking up stuff quickly and, and being able to do stuff and copy stuff and you know, so that's very fortunate. So it's kind of, I've kind of slowly got the idea that I can do anything. And as long as I put my creativity into it, I can enjoy it, you know. Mm -hmm. I can, I, you, you, the cooking, you know, I love cooking because it's smells, it's colour, it's tastes, yeah. it's presentation, and it makes people happy. The hairdressing, I, I bumped into a girl in Camden and got my hair coloured purple, and I said I could do her advertising for her. I ended up painting the interior of the hair shop, and then to get her into the magazines, I started doing all the sort of punk stuff. So I was painting leopard spots and patterns into hair. And eventually I got into Time Out magazine. I had a double page spread and the phone didn't stop. We were having people from Japan, from Germany. It was just bonkers. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a, a, it seems like a long life now, you know. <laughs> we suddenly realized, God, James, you're 55 in January. That's nearly 60. 
that's, you know, you're, you're getting old now. And uh, it's, you know, so... It's it's funny, isn't it? When we're when we're kids, we say we're nearly twelve when we're like eleven in three weeks. But <laughs> yes. but, but when we get to sort of like in late forties, early fifties, we suddenly start clinging on to that year oh, until yes. the, till the yeah. final minute. I'm I'm, I'm I'm still below fifty five. <laughs> oh shit! I'm fifty five. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's another bracket that you suddenly yeah. feel that you're getting into. Yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, so I'm based in London. I've mm -hmm. um, I grew up in London. I grew up in North London in Muswell Hill next to Ali Pali. I used to sit on top of Ali Pali and watch London and wow. get stoned. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a, it's a lovely place to live. It's very, I'm, I've been very lucky because it's very green and there's lots of creative people around here. So yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, as I got older, uh, I met a lady and I've moved down to Crouch End. So I now live in Crouch End. Right. So. Uh, which is it's just changing really big at the moment. Uh -huh. We're getting a huge development in the middle of Crouch End with a big boutique hotel and it's mad. The urbanisation of London is just crawling out. Yeah, yeah, it is indeed. Um, so what or who do you feel has most influenced your art? I mean, you've already mentioned quite a lot of um, quite a lot of influences you've had with Camden Market and the, the different things and stuff that were going on around you. But who, who or what do you think has influenced you the most in your artistic uh, output? So, so at school, I mean, I, I, I loved art, art history. So, I mean, I, you, you do all of the, the, the famous artists and, uh, and I particularly liked Van Gogh and the colours mm -hmm. and the sort of the madness. Yeah. I was, <laughs> unfortunately, I am attracted to the madness. Uh, I have had my own mental health issues i had i've had a couple of breakdowns um and that's kind of due to the fact that i was lost i didn't really know what i was doing um so yeah it's you know the, the, originally you know the, uh, and also my mo my mother's the artist and my dad's the scientist so right. for me leonardo da vinci was like oh who's this man who who's you know drawing these amazing drawings but it's also full of information you know and and at the time you know he he was discovering stuff that nobody knew about yeah. so that that sort of stuff excited me so you can imagine that you know i love the painting but i i don't know if i'm a painter i love the the engineering and the the, the, the illustration but i don't know if i'm like that i actually quite really love making stuff with my hands so you know sculpting stuff and and carpentry and stuff like that so so yeah I was very confused about wh wh which direction I was going in but I was lucky enough to go to Cat Hill and do a foundation course and for a year I had access to rooms of equipment and I just played and I went from pottery to life drawing to printmaking and it was just fabulous. I wanted to stay there for four years. And <laughs> unfortunately, they kept on nudging me saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to specialise in? What are you going to do? And, I, and that was one of the periods after that, that I, I had a bit of a breakdown because I didn't, we had a project called Icons. And it was like our major project. And the, the idea was that we were going to sh present a, a show at the end of the year. And I'd, uh, that was the time when computers were beginning to surface and video games and stuff like that. And I, I was really excited by this whole idea. And I discovered Jaron Lanier, the, the creator of virtual reality. Right. And, and for me, the idea of the possibility of creating an alternative universe that we could play in was mm -hmm. like you know Star Trek and all of these things coming real and it's like way hey, here we go so I got really excited and I thought right icons let's do the video god so I thought right I'll do those sort of you know those old Russian gothic images of got yeah. you know so I thought I'd start doing stuff like that with a video god and and I start I did a big cross with photographs of a friend of mine who's quite built and ended up with sort of four arms and a huge chest and, and you know, and then I did a, a big 
painting of uh, Leonardo's image of man mm -hmm. on the cross and uh, and and ripped open the middle of that and did some texture you know sewing and stuff and made in innards and I just got really excited by techniques and playing and yeah. the 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 uh, project ended up with me cr creating a little room that you got inside of with a dentist chair in it and I got four monitors and there were lights and smells and I videoed st the Star Wars video game and somehow I actually got the computers to interact I don't know how I did because I wasn't really computer minded but the idea was that you got into this pod and you had a spiritual experience with the video god mm -hmm. and at the time the teachers didn't really know what i was doing <laughs> they, they they didn't get i mean to me listening now it sounds fab <laughs> <laughs> well yeah <laughs> now it sounds fab but then you know they wanted me to draw with a pencil and and do still lifes and and stuff like that so it that, that's where my struggle came with people telling me what to do or what yeah. not to do and, and yeah. I've, that's one of the themes of my life is is I felt like people are trying to hold me back yeah and I'm quite sensitive actually so I do listen to people and I'm quite sort of like uh, it's it's a uh, it's a conflict in me with what I want to do and what I'm what, what I'm listening yeah of, you know so those are the, the, the things that kind of helped to uh, create the breakdowns that I've had. Um, but I was also lucky enough that at, at Middlesex Polytechnic, they had a Quantel paint box in a room and there was only three in the country. And that was, that was a 250,000 pound machine. And that one, they made the Channel 4 logo, the first computer graphic on TV. Yeah? And I got the key to the room. And so I was put in my head in video in into this machine and coloring it and playing with this and it was just amazing no nobody showed me how to use it it was just a matter of experimenting and playing yeah. and i just got some nice prints and a bit of video footage out of it for the monitors in the in the pod and uh, so I, I i was very excited by all of this and then it came to the show and nobody said anything it was like there was there was like there was no reaction right and i i, I asked my tutors you know okay so I, I i haven't applied for anything but what what shall i pl apply for what what where do i go from here and i think that they, they didn't really know because there wasn't a lot out there and they yeah. probably didn't know about it because it wasn't their field mm -hmm. but they suggested that i do graphic design or something or yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't feel like anybody gave me any real solid advice. I think but that I, is quite often the way with uh, with with schools and establishments is is that they've got set paths that they think people should follow, and they try to push people onto those paths, uh, um, and not not through will, but just through lack of knowing what else is available. You know, I, I didn't know anything about performance art or anything like that when I was at school, um, and we didn't learn about that kind of art. You know, uh, conceptual art and stuff. And I've learned all of that since I left school, and it's it, it's opened my eyes to what art can be. And you know, it, I just think that that's a real missed opportunity with some people. But obviously, the, the, there's huge amounts of creativity, and they kind of stem it and stop it and cap it and say you must follow this path. You know, which which is uh, it's being a teacher is a very difficult life. My wife is a Absolutely. teacher, yeah. so uh, I know how hard she works just to try and get the kids to learn a little bit about something. She's a French yeah. teacher, yeah. so uh, you know the teachers do their best, and it's uh, it's it, it. I was just a very complex child who, who yeah. wanted a lot of help. Um, you know. But I think quite often um, children with creative minds are are that way, aren't they? They're, 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 they're going off in that direction. They're going off in that direction at the same time. And it's really hard to, you know, contain that. And um, <laughs> when you've got a class with 30 kids or whatever, I, I wouldn't want to be the one trying to, <laughs> trying to 
encourage people to go every which way you know so so yeah it's a, it's a very difficult job like you say so I, and that leads us on to um what advice would you give um somebody starting out in art now because obviously you know you've struggled at, at times with with your art and your creativity um so was there any advice that you received that you found useful or that you wish you'd ignored um as you were going through your journey um and what advice would you give to somebody else if they came to you now and said james I'm thinking of a career in art. What will I, you know? What what should I do? Um, never give up. Yeah. Never give up. I have I have fallen down so many times. I've tried to start businesses. I've tried to be an artist, prof, you know, a professional artist, make a living from it. Mm -hmm. I've had to go back and find work to pay the bills. I've you know, and yeah, I'm fifty. 55 now in January and it's, it's taken a long time for me to get to the point now where I'm gonna you know it I mean I literally only started in August I was made redundant from my stonemasonry job in August I was a nice. I, I progressed to being a the carpenter at the stonemason so I was making molds for for to, to make stonework mm -hmm. and uh, they went down in the in the lockdown and um so I had a bit of money and they gave me a, a settlement and mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been going since August. And this is the first time that I actually feel like it's going to, this is it. it it's, it's the pat, the jigsaw puzzle. I'm kind of finding those last few pieces now and I'm yeah. beginning to go, Oh yeah, look, look, they, that fits there. That fits there. That fits there. So, you know, it's uh, never give up, never yeah. give up keep on experimenting whatever you do even if you do i mean i've i ended up being a security guard at one point in a tower after the grenfell thing mm -hmm. i was walking around flights of stairs for eight hours a day yeah you know and my mind was going why am i doing this i was doing it to pay the bills you know yeah. and that's what i had to do at the time so whatever you're doing just keep keep knowing that you know there's more time there's, there's 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 more opportunities ahead of you keep going and just keep on practicing and and do do what you love doing you yeah. know don't 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 take take don't let anybody stop you break the rules oh, yeah. after, you know yeah i mean it, it, it's really great to hear that from you because uh, I, i'm i'm 47 and i still haven't got a clue what i'm doing with my art <laughs> so so you know there's hope for me yet <laughs> um so if you could spend a day with another artist living or dead who would you choose to spend 24 hours with wow i mean as i said i, I did love my art history so i i uh, i recently went to um Bru uh, Brussels and mm -hmm. I saw the Keith Herring exhibition All right. yeah. and when you find out that there were periods of time when he was producing like 70 paintings in a day for months you just think to yourself wow the energy that guy must have had the excitement of running around and you know being excited and meeting Andy Warhol and all of those people and, and just buzzing mm -hmm. you know you'd, I, it'd be great to spend a day with him yeah and, and somebody like Andy Warhol, you know, who, who had a factory where mm. people were just playing and experimenting and, you know, and, 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 and he was playing with the, because I've, I've actually made my own money. I've, mm -hmm. I've got a, a, a conversation going on inside of me about what money is and what make, what people will do for money and what, how do we value ourselves and how does it in, come up in our lives so andy's money idea you know art is art is business and great art is great business and money yeah. is art and you know i mean it's like yeah yeah i get i get that and i'm and then, you know if the, if the government can print it so can i yeah well, <laughs> if they if they found the secret money garden so have i you know it's like it's 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 all imagination and creativity and and you know so I've, I've been selling my zero dollars and I was selling them for five pounds each. And they've just, two of them have sold in an auction recently and one of them went up to 26 pounds. Oh, wow. So um, my, my rate That's of inflation value, for you. Yes, exactly. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm very pleased because I, 
I printed them up about 10 years ago. Right. And I've got about 2,000 in a box under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, different limited editions. So there's different ones going out at the moment for different prices. Brilliant. But um, the other person that's recently influenced me is a guy called Anthony McEwen, who right. goes under the name Rugman. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I know. And uh, we kind of interacted over yeah, the last right. year, couple of years. And uh, I followed him and I've bought his T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And uh, and interacted with him and participated in some things with him and and we're very similar with the things that we like like tattoos like the clothes we like yeah he's a lovely guy I you know I I want to be a nice guy I I want to like I want people to like me you know it's it's it's, it's all about being friendly and being happy yeah. and and so yeah he's he's kind of I've seen him as hey. He can make it. Why can't I? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know. So it, it, yeah. This, I mean, this is great because this shows people that uh, that you can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, th I, th I think it's um, it's it's worth remembering, isn't it? At times that, that you, you know it is possible to make it. <laughs> it is possible to to put stuff out there and people like it and buy it, and that's a great feeling. And you know if. if if you can duplicate that and keep duplicating it, then one day maybe you know you'll be able to duplicate it and be able to live off it. But until then, we all end up doing jobs that you know that pay for us to live, so that we yeah. are able to create the stuff in our spare time. So yeah. it's, you know, and, and that's where you know that's where I've been for many years. So yeah. I've, I've done jobs. I really enjoy the job that I do now. But you know, yeah, I've, I've done jobs in the past that I've hated, but they have enabled me to do other things in my life, which you know, that's, that's nice. why we do them, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't um, all have trust funds, do we? Sorry, we don't all have trust funds. No, no, definitely not. Unfor <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. I think we should. I think we. I think we should be paid yeah. as, as British citizens to be British citizens, because you know, and spread the money around. Because there's a lot of money sitting around in banks that just don't aren't isn't doing anything. As as you were alluded to earlier, you know, money is a concept, and it's you know, yeah, you can be wealthy in many other ways than, oh, than yes. just what's in your bank. And, uh, Absolutely, you know, and and many of those other ways are far more important than what's in your bank. Absolutely. So it leads us on to the final question. What's in store for the future? And do you have anything you're working on or planning um, at the moment that you could share with us today? Um, so at this very moment, I'm doing uh, Saturday and Sunday up at Lauderdale House in Highgate Affair. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make some money to uh, get through Christmas. Um, on Monday, I'm delivering two big, tattoo signs uh, nice. and they're like the old marquee carnival light mm -hmm. so I, I make those out of metal and wood and put the the old carnival bulbs in so and they're they're in a, a, a carnival sort of style with that lettering Fabulous. so that's really exciting because that's a, a new client up mm -hmm. in Kidderminster and he's opening up his third tattoo shop so he's going to want lots of art hopefully Brilliant. Um, yeah, so, so there's that happening. I'm just doing a set of gloves mm -hmm. for Ben Oakley with his logo on it. And uh, the orders are coming in on my Etsy shop for those. So I'm struggling to keep up with those at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of you know, the bigger picture, uh, in Crouch End, uh, they are converting the old town hall into this boutique hotel, but they're also got a side of it, which is uh, going to be art galleries and studios and, oh, wow. and restaurants and cafes and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm just about to have an interview with them about potentially getting a studio there because oh, I've got to move out of my bedroom. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's becoming crazy. And my wife's beginning to nag me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But, uh, well, good luck with so, that. So, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's um, and, then, then, and then just keep on pushing forward and, you know, and make it pay and make it pay so that it actually buys me some time. That's what yeah. I want is I want to be able to buy time so that I can literally 
take a breath and find out what's right in the back of my head. Yeah. You know, because it's, 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 I've had so much sit on top of my thoughts that, uh, that I do feel like I, mean, I, I want to uh, explore a, a, bit, a little bit what was going on inside me when I had those breakdowns and what, mm -hmm. you know, what, 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 what came up for me during that time. I mean, I've got, I did create a, a vinyl character called Just a Mouse, who I want to develop into a designer toy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's got his own little world and his own backstory. So there's that thing, and then there's the money side. And I, I want to do, I want to set up a project where I have a stall and you can buy your soul back. Because my character, Deddy's, he's done a deal with the devil and he's bought all the souls back, refurbished them, recalibrated them, and you can get your soul back. And you'll get a little certificate and you'll be forgiven. <laughs> it's called Brilliant. Second Chance. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, lots, lots in store. Uh, that's great. That's great. And um, I, I look forward to seeing them. Um, thank you very much for spending the time today. It's, it's been enlightening. Um, I, I feel as though I know a lot more about um, what you're about and, and, and your art and stuff. And I hope people have enjoyed it. Um, thank so, you. So, so, so thanks for spending the time today. Um, if you like what you've seen today, um, please hit subscribe below. Um, subscribe to my channel uh, because over the forthcoming months, I will be um, interviewing many, many more artists, hopefully. And um, hopefully some of them will um, grab your interest. Thank you very much for spending the time today to listen to this interview um, and all the best.